is Maya, and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. If you saw my last episode, I talked about the origins of the Hermes double scarf concept, along with some of my top picks for what's available this season. In this video, I'd like to talk about another highly collectible double face scarf, which has been ever so elusive on the Hermes website, but also available this season. From the men's side of the house, I'm referring to the scarf called C'est la Fête by Daisuke Nomura. I'll share a bit about the designer behind this grail scarf, its background, and take a closer look at design details. Daisuke Nomura is a Japanese designer and illustrator who works with Hermes. He originally came to the attention of the house through a tie drawing contest organized with a website, Design Boom, in 2009. Themed Les Cravate par Hermes, this competition drew nearly 5,500 entries from designers in 97 different countries. With the jury headed by Pierre Alexis Dumas, General Artistic Director of Hermes, the top three winning designs of the contest would go on to be included in the house's Fall Winter 2010 tie collection. With his drawing called Party Time of a skeleton horse and attendant, Nomura won a special prize for Innovation Graphisme and gained the attention of Christophe Guano, the much vaunted master of men's silk at Hermes. In his own words, Nomura said, quote, For more than 100 years, the horse and attendant have been serving us without rest. They can have a party sometimes, don't you think? End quote. According to interviews, Nomura draws inspiration from manga, anime, and other Japanese cultural motifs, which he mixes with objets from the Emile Hermes collection to make designs that are uniquely his own. Other Nomura designs you may recognize include Mega Chariot, Cheval Punk, Codice Rock, and more. C'est la Fête, also known as the Skeleton Scarf, was originally issued in 2012 in a black pellet as a gift to guests for a Halloween party hosted by Hermès at the Palais Pronier. This is a major Parisian landmark on which construction started in 1807 under Napoleon and which served as the headquarters of the Paris Stock Exchange until 1987. After its special edition at that time, C'est la Fête was then introduced in the vintage silk 70 by 70 centimeter format in the men's collection. Women quickly discovered this design and it became highly sought after for New Year's celebrations. It has since been reissued in a GM cashmere shawl and now a double-sided silk carré. In 2020, Hermès's first double-sided scarf for men was this reissue of C'est la Fête, a clear sign of how highly regarded Nomura is for the house. As I mentioned in my prior video, this innovative reversible scarf format features a design printed on both sides, one colorful and the other a mirror image finesse version. The Hermes logo takes center stage, topped by the gentleman skeleton rider astride his rearing steed and using a codicus to break the horse's bit above. The codicus is a traditional symbol of the Greek god Hermes and, of course, a key element of the house's logo even today. You can see classic Hermes motifs such as bits, buckles, tassels and leather straps throughout the design with the two words emblazoned in the corner of the scarf creativité or creativity and loyalty or loyalty this scarf has been quite elusive on the hermes website at least here in the U.S., but available in at least two different colorways. Again, this is on the men's side of the house. This first colorway, predominantly blues and grays on the vibrant side and orange on the other, is reminiscent of the more monochromatic versions of when this design originally was issued. 
The hem looks to be a dark navy, which is fabulous against that pop of orange on the other side. I chose the khaki, anthracite, and gris colorway with its orange contrast hem. Again, I love that contrast of color for both sides of the scarf. And you can see the skeleton motif recurring in bridle bits, spurs, and medallions. With the exception of the Hermes logo, the finesse side is a virtual mirror image of the colorful one. I thought at first that the wording on the scarf might also be reversed, but actually these read correctly on the back side as well. A couple of things related to this design that I wanted to mention. The first is the 7H Selafet tie. If you haven't seen this, this is available in the current season with a very special touch. Part of the Selafet design is incorporated into the tie's lining. It's of course not visible from the front, which looks like a classic Hermes tie, but if you turn it over, you'll find the skeleton rider on his horse. The second thing, and I think you'll appreciate this for the pure artistry of it, but earlier this year, Hermes introduced its Slim Dermes Selafet watch. This is a very special, highly limited timepiece that was debuted at the Watches and Wonders 2021 and celebrates the brand's commitments to artistic crafts and métier d'art. It's an impressive work of art made possible thanks to the craftsmanship of skillful enamelers and engravers. As the name suggests, this timepiece is based on the Slim Dermes watch created by Philippe de Hotel in 2015. The motif on the dial showcases the skeleton figure in a tailcoat and top hat, riding a skeleton horse, from Nomura's 2012 Selafette scarf design. For this watch, Nomura again collaborated with the house to turn a flat illustration into this three-dimensional design. According to Hermes, the Selafette dials are handcrafted in Switzerland, with three artisans responsible for creating these artful masterpieces. One for the miniature enamel, one for the pione enamel, and the last for the intricate engraving work. For the miniature enameling, the artisan applies the contours of the motif on a hand enameled and polished white gold surface before using a very fine brush to adorn it with various colored glass powders mixed with natural oils. The equally meticulous technique of pione enamel involves inserting gold or silver leaf pions between the layers of enamel to create various light, transparency, and relief effects. Several coats of enamel are applied and successively dried, then kiln fired. The craftsman specializing in engraving then uses a chisel to bring out the three-dimensional motif by carving out the relief and depth of these figures in gold. This allows the colored motif to seemingly pop out of the dial, which has a dark blue background. The whole dial takes about three weeks to create. A 39.5 millimeter white gold case houses the Hermes H 1950 watch movement, and it's topped off with a blue alligator strap from the Hermes workshop. Limited to only eight examples, this very special watch was priced at a reported $113,000. Clearly not your average timepiece. From a symbolic point of view, the skeleton and bones are often considered symbols of mortality, but they also represent permanence beyond death as well as our earthly passage. Throughout history, especially in troubled times, people were encouraged to think about death and its meaning. In medieval Europe, as an example, when plagues abounded, a philosophy that took hold asked people to meditate on objects that reminded them of life and death. Memento mori, which translates to remember that you will die, was a discipline that was held in high esteem at that time. In the tarot deck, death, the number 13, has a predominantly positive meaning, representing change or transformation as in a life cycle stage. In this sense, death is not about a literal finish, but the ending of a cycle and the start of something new.
So death carries rebirth inherent within it, and the card represents the inevitability of transformation and growth. For those of you who are wondering, the weight on this scarf is no different than any other 90 by 90 centimeter scarf, clocking in at 65 grams. I also read, just as a point of interest, that the rouletteurs, or artisans who meticulously sew these hand-rolled hems, use a single thread to do it. Phenomenal. So there you have it, a bit about this spectacular double-faced scarf from Hermes. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't yet ventured into the double-faced scarves and would like to experiment, I have a tutorial on playing with this concept with pairs of 90 by 90 centimeter scarves. Be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more, so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!